Scott Welch, Muscle Insider Magazine. I am le here with the legendary John Meadows. Legend in my own mind. <laughs> Listen, uh, we're going to cut to the chase. You brought in into bodybuilding, you and Milo Sarsev, the whole peri, peri nutrition, intra nutrition sort of concept. W what inspired that and how, how long did you, I mean, how long have you been using that within your training and your nutrition? Um, so, first of all, Milo's inspired me. So he was talking about what's going on in muscle cells, and you have all this cool stuff going on. You have, um, I'll throw some big words out at you, insulin-mediated GLUT4 translocation, non-insulin-mediated GLUT4 translocation, which all that means is it means the cell has an ability to open up and suck in whatever's in your blood and nutrients. And Milos always talked about that. And he had this philosophy, he called it empty blood. Like if you don't have all these nutrients, there's nothing really to shuttle into the muscle. And I thought, you know what? Conceptually, that makes a lot of sense. So let me try this. So I tried out the protocols, you know, carbohydrates. Uh, I like cluster dextrin myself, but essential aminos, creatine. So training provides those, training and eating carbohydrates make those processes happen. And so together, I mean, a lot of people say, well, you don't even need food to make that happen. And they're right. Mechanical tension in the muscle does start that process, but so does insulin. Um, and insulin attaches to the insulin receptor on the cell membrane. And anyways, so it made sense in theory, but I'm not just a theory guy. Like, I want to see what does this feel like. Yeah. So I noticed when I was doing it, two things. Number one, my recovery was amazing. So instead of my normal five days of being sore of a leg workout, it was a half day or one day. So we kept playing around with it for the last nine, ten years. We've been really working on the formulas. And I'm just a massive believer in it. It made a big difference for me. It's made a big difference for hundreds, if not thousands, of people that I've worked with in the last ten years. So I just I wish there was more research on it. They, they, they do all this research on pre- and post-workout. But I think a lot of that magic happens intra mm -hmm. while you're training. You know, you're creating all this muscle damage while you train. And you can effectively, the carbohydrate part is real interesting to me because the cluster dextrin, it deploys at a normal speed, I would say. It's not like a fast acting, bam, shoot your blood sugar up, bam, your pancreas produces a bunch of insulin, so your blood sugar is up down. You get this nice steady level of insulin, which helps... I don't want to say prevent, it helps slow down muscle protein breakdown. So that equation that you have, the muscle protein synthesis and, and muscle protein breakdown is more in your favor. So you're more apt to put on muscle. And I like to train hard because some people say, well, don't, don't train that hard. Like, no, that's not part of the equation, man. We're going to train hard. So I really love the, the intra stuff. I'm, I'm obsessed with it. I have been for 10 years just because it's like, if you said what's, if you could only take one supplement, what would you take? It would be a good interest supplement for me. So interesting. Now, in terms of the cluster dextrin, what dose of cluster dextrin would you say an athlete, a bodybuilder, should be taking during training? So you got to look at the goal. First of all, it's why am I taking it? And the reason why I advocate it is recovery. So when you can recover from harder workouts, so it allows you to train harder, and then you can train more frequently. So you get more stimulation through more sessions throughout the year. So if you're getting you know, six to eight workouts a month instead of four workouts, it's more opportunities to grow. So what I tell people is it depends on your recovery. So there's no magic dose. It's not at 25 grams, it'll create all the repair you need. It's more of, it's more of an experiment. And you may have some body parts that, that get more sore than others. Like for example, some people, like this is true for me, my legs get really sore compared to my upper body. And some people might, their chest might get real sore. So that might require 40, 40 grams or might require 50 grams or might require 30. Whereas maybe your arms don't get sore. So maybe it's only half a scoop, maybe it's only 10. Yeah. So what I like for people to do is I like them to use the lowest amount that they can and get the desired effect. Okay. That way they can not, I don't like for people to spend money they don't need to spend. Sure. So I want them to, to get the most optimum use out of it that they can. Yeah. Is it possible that the larger the muscle group, obviously the more glycogen that's going to be able to be stored in that muscle group, so maybe there is a higher requirement for carbohydrates during certain muscle group training sessions? Um, yes, there, I, think that's, I think that's accurate. I would also say part of it's genetics. Some people just get more sore. 
Um, part of it is also the way you train. And I'll give you an example. Lengthened exercises, like, uh, like a stiff-legged deadlift your hamstring or a fly if you're... Exercises that really emphasize the length and part of a movement tend to cause more muscle damage. Um, high, high, high volumes tend to cause more muscle damage. So a lot of it is also how you're training. It's the exercises that you're using. Um, potentially, it's to your point, it's the size of the muscle. Um, so there's, there's a lot of factors that kind of come into play there. But I, I find that very interesting too. I, I just, that's a good question. Sure. Now, in terms of EAA, is there any? Is it the similar to the carbohydrates? Depends on the person. Depends on the di the meals. If they're having a lower protein diet, then obviously their requirements for essential amino acids would be higher. What is there a general guideline that you have with some of the athletes you train during training? How much? How much? What level of a dose of EAAs you would need? I well, so there's a couple different ways of looking at that too. I mean, if you look at it scientifically, three grams of leucine is the leucine threshold, they call it, that triggers protein synthesis. Triggering protein synthesis is only a small part of this, though. So the, the point of having an EAA is to have all the constituents. It, it, allow, it gives you substrate to actually build muscle. Yep. The BCAs are doing some really cool stuff, but then when you throw in the EAAs, now you've given your body all the, again, kind of all the raw material to build muscle. So you're going to want to have at least three grams of leucine. You're probably going to have about six grams overall of EAA. I tend to find that to be a good dose. Sometimes I might use 10 with people, but when it comes to dosing, I think as long as you got three grams of leucine, maybe a gram and a half of the other two branch chains, and then maybe three total, you don't need a lot of tryptophan. You don't need a lot of, um, uh, um, um, Oh my God, I'm having a brain dump here. Threonine. Threonine. Phenylalanine, I use a little bit extra there. Histidine. Hist I'm sorry. So you don't need a lot of histidine. You don't, you don't need a lot of methionine. That's not good for flavoring either. It gives you that real soft hurt. Uh, um, so you don't need a ton of it, right? You just need enough to make the protein complete to give you substrate. Okay, last question. I'm sorry, guys. How did you get the name The Mountain Dog? I'm a big... Um, I love Bernese Mountain Dogs. Okay. So I used to be on the message boards as Mountain Dog, but it was referring to my Bernese. I actually, I actually used to show Bernese Mountain Dogs. Okay. And I love Bernese Mountain Dogs. So I would get on these forums and I would write, here's what I think about amino acids or here's what I think about training. And people started saying, well, that's the Mountain Dog this or Mountain Dog that. So when I was starting up my businesses, I was asking my friends, I was like, everybody's calling this mountain dog stuff. What, like, what do you think of that? So some of my friends were like, that's dumb, man, because when somebody does a Google search, it's literally just going to give them pictures of mountain dogs. And then my other friends were like, I like it because it's you. Yeah. And what I found over the years, especially in business, is when I just was just me and did what I want because I believe in it, it always worked out for me. Yeah. So I chose to just stick with the name because I love it, it's me. It's not just some acronym I made up randomly just to look cool. Um, I love Bernese Mountain Dogs, so that's where it came from. Okay. <laughs> you can see the man behind Granite Supplements, which are now in Canada here. Obviously, Empire Sports is uh, the ones who are uh, Empire Nutrition. Sorry, what the hell? I'm saying sports. But anyways, uh, John Meadows here with Granite Supplements. You can see the brains behind the formulations that are here, and it's great to see him here in Canada at the Popeyes Fall Classic.